seen this, by the way, right? This, uh, the infamous Drill 14. Right, you're gonna look Drill 14? Plus 14, there's emergency shits in the SBC <laughs> kit. I'm no not way. even joking, right? Um, hang on, that's all fine. So, yeah, I mean, the one thing everyone always figured, was it Task 17? Let's have a look. Yeah, yeah there you go. Task 17, emergency mm. procedures for eating, urinating, defecating. No way. So basically, yeah, in you an have, suit? Yeah. Tactical shits, right? How yeah. do you do uh, a tactical shit in an NBC suit? Uh, like that. But then doesn't that defeat the point of an NBC suit? Well, sort of. So if you ever want to know how to, like, you know, have a tactical dump, there you go. Hi there, and you're watching Air Action TV. I'm Gareth Gatch Harvey. And I'm Tom Anvil Hibbert. And today we're going to be talking about the uh, ASG imported ICS L86A2 light support weapon. And this is particularly interesting to you, Gatch, because I believe many years ago you used to carry one of these. I did. Um, and it was a real one. Yeah. Um, as some of you might know, I did a brief stint in the infantry battalion in my 20s, and uh, as most young soldiers would know of the time, um, the youngest, newest soldier to the um, rifle section in your rifle company would get given one of these, because they're heavy and comfortable pieces of shit. No, actually they're very, very good light support weapons. It's uh, really accurate, aren't they? They are very accurate, um, and we called them crow cannons, because new recruits were called crows, and the crow was given the big cannon. cannon. So, back in the day, the real advantage over one of these was with the, um, the outrigger and the longer barrel would give you more stability and the bipod, of course. So, while the rifle section's individual rifleman could reach out to 400, 500 metres, uh, the LSW could reach out and touch someone, given the good news, at about 600 or more. Firing as a section, I believe it was up to about 750, 800. Uh, those of you who have more recently left the armed force than me can tell me I'm totally wrong on that, but it was like 25 years ago. Yeah, well, Gadget's just going off memory here, so... Uh... I haven't got get, Wikipedia in front of me to tell me what the facts are, that's just kind of how I remember don't get, it. Don't get too nasty with them. But we, um, I was really kind and made you play with it at the weekend. You did, I? and you can see how happy I was about it in this picture here. As, as you can <laughs> see, you were pretty miserable. Yeah, Marty Airsoft, uh, hashtag. No, I mean, the thing is, um, I originally thought, yeah, that'd be fun to do, I wouldn't mind trade something else 86 is like. But um, as soon as I shouldered it, and it's my fault, so I kind of forgot to bring a sling as well. I felt that extra kilogram of weight that you've got, and it's about a kilogram again. And it's all the front, it's all yes, the front end as well. Makes it very, very front heavy. So it brought back a lot of memories, good <laughs> and bad, of very, very hot like summer exercises on Catterick Moor and struggling to get into extended line from Arrowhead. And you, uh, these are the LSWs on the flank, and you're going like that. So you have to run all the way to the front. You're running like a bastard, uh, camp cream streaming down okay. your face, and yeah. you're. Cargo pockets are full and of ammo. Being swimming. a gunner, you've got more ammunition than everyone else. Yeah, and it's heavy, and it's. Uh, but it was quite satisfying knowing how accurate these are. So I want you to kind of see, you know, does that translate in any way to airsoft? And I think it doesn't really. I think it's it's not a bad AG. It's really nice uh, AG. It, it's relatively, it's very really toasty to shoot with. It's like it's it's going at a decent sight legal rate. It's it a, does a good it rate of fire. It's coming about uh, three thirty fps with a with a point two gram BB. Um, it sh shot two five two five gram uh, point two five gram BBs really really well. It's got a decent rate of fire with a seven point four lipo in it. Climbing loads. Now build wise, this is fairly solid. Uh, my, back in the day when I started playing airsoft, and there wasn't an S A eighty family model at all. It was a while before one company brought out an uh, uh, an L eighty five individual yeah. weapon. And that was almost like the real thing, apart from the actual bolt you know, and return spring. If you showed it to most serving squaddies, they thought it was a real one, just from the external build yeah. quality. Now this is close; it's not bad. It's about it's about yeah. the right weight. The um, the steel it's mostly steel stampings, just yeah. like the real one. And it's probably quite thin. I mean, I've never shot a real one, guys, but it's probably quite thin steel stamping, yeah. just just like the real one. Yeah, exactly. You've got. <laughs> and what I do like, and you probably can't see this unless we do this, is the uh, the front handguard where the battery goes in actually hinges forwards, yeah, it's really uh, smart. which is really clever because on a lot of uh, rifles you've got to remove the handguard or you've got to muck around by taking the top cover and heat shield away. Uh, that just, just we'll do it now, so it should be able yeah, to swing it we There we go. You can just swing that baby out, stick a battery straight in. Which is absolutely fantastic. Um, other things I liked about it is they've actually kept having an authentic um, sight rail. Now before we had 20mm rails and everything, the S80 family have its own sight rail which I believe is like a millimetre out. Yes, 19, yeah, 19 millimetres. And you've got a very quick removable sight option with the SUSAT. Now this is an aftermarket SUSAT from a different company, but I'm pretty sure you know any replica SUSAT or a real one will fit and work on this. Yes. And back in the day that was a great thing to do because being relatively like not a donkey at the time, 
I was trusted to have the CWS Common Weapon Sight, which is a Generation 2 night sight I've used at the time. Oh, okay. So you could just pick that up, slide it off. Well, you can't because there's a battery and things in the way. Take your suit out of your belt patch, clip it on, see you relatively well during the night, then in the morning, because you can't use a CWS night sight in the day because you'll just burn it out. Stick that back on, as long as it fits back on the same locking point you put it in originally, okay. your zero is retained. Which obviously isn't such a nice thing in airsoft, but back in the day you were kind of thankful for that. Yeah, the modern ones, the A2s, most of the A2s now have this this taken off and a 20 mm drill put in. Yeah, a standard yeah. mil 1930 mil put on. So they're now carrying ACOGs and uh, LCANs. Yeah. Another nice thing back in the day when I was an LSW gunner is the classic light machine gun pose, is just to have it in your but and put your hand over the top or underneath like that to bolt it in. You see MG42 gunners doing it, MG3 yeah, gunners, yeah. etc. Even Bren gunners. With these, you've got this. I can't remember what the technical term is it for naming a part, you call it. <laughs> but you've got this little hand grip at the back. And also, so it doesn't slope off your shoulder. I found, I found that hook really useful, actually. Yeah. And they've modelled everything pretty authentically to the real thing. Yeah. I mean. Is there anything on there that is that jars a bit when you use it? Oh, do you know what? I think all SA80 family guns do this. Uh, there's a bolt release catch on the other side because this is your bolt hold open device so if you just see that you ram that back you'd actually move that there hold it open it lock it in place and then to release it there's another bolt on the other side yeah and it go forwards again uh, now because that's a pig to do with the gearbox, yeah, the the way, the gearbox nearly then. all airsoft replicas in fact i think all airsoft okay. replicas don't do that and as a purist i'd like to see that because having bought that evo recently i really like that bolt release where it goes ka-ching forwards yeah but seriously really because you've said i hate ball pups because I was brought up with AKs and ARs in airsoft, and I've never fired, I've never fired a real pull bolt. I've never fired very few real guns, so I really hate the ergos on this. But you find it because you because it was the first firearm you ever exactly. Tried, it's, you, you find it natural. Don't you? Even 20 years on, there's a muscle memory there that uh, putting the magazine under my arm, so to speak, to load it doesn't feel weird. It doesn't feel strange. Yeah, in fact, actually, out. using an M4 feels weird because yeah. I always feel like the mag's far too far forwards. To gauge, this is an L86A2. You used an L86. A1. I did because uh, basically they, the A2 didn't come in until about the early 2000s I think so when I was in from 98 to 2001 that's pretty much all we had in the yeah, armory yeah. and to be honest it's probably one of the most maligned small arms in service history of any country now if you consider that it if you believe that the A1 was really problematic it probably took about well 15 years to fix it yeah it was, it was the A2 is an example it was post World War one wasn't yeah. it um, and that's when and that was obviously it was designed, I think it was designed for about 120 rounds in 24 hours in a West German forest. Yeah. Um, and then suddenly it was in the Middle desert, East. We've never used that lubricant before, etc. Yeah, but the thing is, if you consider the M16 series, uh, which is again a cracking rifle now, went through absolutely catastrophic failures in its first few years, far worse than the SA80 series did. I mean, yeah. every second gun failed to fire in the first round of. Bear in mind, we're not out. firearms experts, no. so this is just, this is a, if, anyone get, if anyone gets upset, one, please let us know in the comments. And two, we really... This is just as military historians, it's our reading, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, we yeah, we just, just enjoy so, talking about them. Anyway, one of the problems a lot of people said with these is you got a lot of stoppages, they fell to bits, they yeah. broke, but in the three years I was around the SA80 family, which included at the time the individual weapon and the LSW, yeah. um, in our rifle section we'd have six individual weapons, two LSWs, there was also a tank reversion, which I think is the L22 or something. I don't know, because we never saw that. It didn't exist back in the day. I think they were made, but we couldn't afford them. Anyway, stoppages, um, I didn't see hardly any. I didn't see any broken firing pins. I didn't see um, any knackered gas parts or anything like that. What I did see a lot of uh, was blank rounds, which are obviously not under the same sort of like firing pressure as live rounds. Yeah, and lower, less, less power to lower firing Yeah, pressure. and what would tend to happen, and I don't know if it's just because of the firing pressure, when the round, the fired round was extracted and the bolt went back and the extraction cloth took it out and pinged it out, it would quite often just jam in like that. Yeah, it would be um, uh, less extraction force due to yeah. lower power to And to be honest, that was the easiest stoppage to clear in the world because you just basically like tilted it to one side and waggled it a little bit. To be honest. <laughs> it, it wasn't going to ruin your day at all. Yeah. Uh, now I can understand there will be some like service veterans out there who will have had terrible things happening to them yeah. with early models of the gun. I can only say in my own personal and limited experience, I felt that this got a bad press and usually people who give it a slagging off They've never, fired. never fired one. They've never even held one. I think to be honest. most of the service people I've spoken to who've used certainly used an A2 have no problems with it at all, and it's and it's a reliable. Uh, yeah, I hit. think the only feedback I get about the A2 is it's excessively heavy yeah, compared to some of the rifles. You know, it's inherent. It's inherent in the design, really. Um, Which you wouldn't think it would be though, with having a um, stamped. Yeah, well, if you're interested in history, 
of this firearms family in from Forgotten Weapons, the YouTube channel, has got this fantastic nine nine part, extremely nerdy series. Oh, and there's a lot of politics behind the and development he, of the he, whole oh, he goes for all, assault rifle system. He know. goes for all of that. He goes yeah. right right from the beginning all the way up to the A3s that are starting to deploy now. It's absolutely yeah. brilliant. But I mean, essentially, part of the section, these were designed there to give you... A lot of people think these are supposed to be a light machine gun and they're not. They're a light support weapon. The entire point of the LSW back in the day was to give added range to the section firepower. So yeah. you, okay. as a section, you could reach out to around about six, 700 metres, possibly a little bit further. Yeah. I can't remember. It has been over 20 years uh, <laughs> since I did all those skill arms lessons that I probably forgot about when I left. Um, and it wasn't supposed to be putting withering beaten zones of fire down like the GPMG can do, yeah. like um, you know, like an MG3 could do, because you've only got a 30 round box magazine. You had to do short controlled bursts that you know suppressed the enemy while the other group went in, or you took accurate shots out of a range that the IW couldn't reach. Well, that's like the US Marines, who are now using the M27s to deliver extended accurate fire onto target, and then while the, while the manoeuvre element moves in. Uh, so I think even the British Army is starting to consider bringing these back, which you, well, you had some feelings, which we won't yeah. go into now. Well, interestingly, I, mean, I was never part of the whole sort of like sniper element of our battalion, etc. But uh, talking to a fellow former infantryman, he was saying that uh, in his battalion, some of the sniper teams, he would carry these as more accurate fire to be supporting the chap who's got okay, so the sniper the, rifle. The spotter so when I did call this earlier a crow cannon that was given to like the newest recruit in the section because it was heavy you know, and awkward and everybody else didn't want the, the buggerant to carry it. Um, Matt Skunk from Skunk Works was letting me know that actually it was given to some fairly qualified soldiers as well because it was just a more accurate... The ones that could shoot straight. Yeah, exactly, yeah. you know, who could look after it and uh, get the best out of it. So, when I call it a crow cannon, I am kind of having a bit of a laugh, really. I'm not sort of, uh, you know, I'm not slagging it off. It's a well, if that, service if that, if rifle. If that was the term that was used in, when, when you were in service, then that's what it was. Mm. We think it's a great replica. Um, looks the part, feels the part, works the part. Gadge, gadge can test the yeah. fact that it fills the part. I, it brought back some, uh, some <laughs> memories, <laughs> lugging it around on a hot day. But um, if I was uh, going to start a British Army loadout, especially one if it was around about the sort of like 95 to 2005 sort of era sort of thing, yeah. I would have no problem buying and fielding one of these ICS ASG imported L86. Just give it to the nearest guy on your team, eh? Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it for a bit. Um, I think if you're going to buy one though, Go to games where you'll get the best out of yeah. it. Go to games where there's going to be ammo limits. Go to games where you're yeah. going to be respected as a light machine gunner, not the guy carrying the heavy AG. Yeah, absolutely. If you've been an LSW or SAATIW user in Airsoft, or even the real world, why not add a comment and tell us what your findings are with either the real steel or the Airsoft version? We don't mind if you think we're talking a load of rubbish because we're literally yeah. going off memory. Please tell us. Just tell us. It'll be fun. So, like, subscribe, ding that bell, and we'll see you next time. Thank you very much.